So I was sitting there in a coffee shop. Right. Uh, I don't remember which one because it's made up for the story. You know, I had this, you know, thin, light, ultra book laptop like they tell you to have these days. You're supposed to do that. And this guy has uh, what looked like a, a really old PC, but it was a tower. So his desktop, the monitor at the at the table in the coffee shop. It's tremendous. Never saw anything like that. Well, I'm sick of everything getting lighter and thinner and smaller. You know, you don't know this. People ask me my favorite computer. My favorite computer was a Dell Precision, uh, Precision M4800 workstation. And it had, uh, you know, it was a laptop, but it had every port. It was big and heavy. And it was just, you know, it was a, it was a desktop replacement, but it felt solid. It felt like it got something for the money. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at Windows security baselines and different ways we can deploy them within Tune. So we're going to get into it. Yeah, man, that precision was just, you know, the, the, the matte display, the big chunky bezel. It doesn't matter how small the bezels are. You know, this thing was like six pounds. And, I mean, you can, you can conquer the world on this thing, I'll tell you. solving for the modern workplace. All right, so I've been getting asked about this for some time now, and I guess I haven't um, done a video on it for whatever reason, who knows. You know, Intune has a great feature called security baselines. And the whole idea of this, yeah, security baseline for Windows 10 and later, is to create a predefined list of settings that comply with what Microsoft considers security benchmarks. So if we create profile, and we're going to hit create. I'm going to call this uh, security baseline for 24H2. And it does change every time they put out a new version of Windows. Let's take a look at the configuration settings, right? I, I often call this the greatest hits because it's literally, I mean, there's so much stuff here from every category. And it's like a little bit. Some of it has more. And you can see they are all preset like control panel personalization, right? Uh, prevent the camera on the lock screen. This is enabled because that's their recommendation. We could disable it. We could leave it not configured, but you know, the, the whole idea here is this is easy to turn on and according with best practices and, and deploy it. And you can see they have things from different areas. So the auditing category, if we were to go to data protection, they're blocking DMA. We go to firewall. There's some basic firewall type rules set for us. So, you know, you would deploy this, hit next, and then um, it's just out there. So easy, done. We set the baselines and move on with our lives. Not quite. So I get asked about this a lot. And while it's appealing to be able to just deploy that, the fundamental issue is this isn't going to work for everyone, right? These don't exactly line up with security standards like CIS, NIST, and you know a ton of other standards that are out there. We're not gonna get into it today. But you, know, you might have things in your organization that this will straight up break, right? Because it's not a one size fits all. So the real question becomes, how can we evaluate the individual policies in here and see how they work with us and see how you know we might need additional settings from the security catalog? or template profiles. So we're gonna look at a few things. And the first thing we're gonna look at is how we can test these individually so that it's not all or nothing. Okay, so on this wonderful blog, my very good friend and very talented uh, Microsoft architect, Dustin Gullett, uh, wrote this up uh, a few days ago, rolling out Intune security baselines without causing a workplace uprising. Uh, I'll put the link below, I highly recommend you uh you know you take a look at this because this practice has worked uh many times for us and uh, i can't imagine doing it you know any any other way now but basically what dustin does here and i'll open this in a new tab is he went ahead and created all of the separate categories right as individual JSONs that can be imported what i mean by that is if we were to go back to intune and take a look at these categories right so here admin templates, auditing, browser, data protection, defender. Look at this over here. Administrative templates, auditing, browser, DMA, data protection. So what he did is he went ahead and broke these out. Um, and they're JSON, so you know it, it might not be something you can browse through here and understand exactly what's going on. But these are the exact policies with the recommended values as they are set 
here if you were to go do them, right? Prevent, enable, lock, lock screen camera, that's enabled. Uh, does he have it up here? Let's see. Yep, prevent lock screen camera. Yep, value is one. So he has them set exactly the same, just in a JSON format. The benefit of this is you only have to deal with this one at a time. So if you wanna apply this in chunks, so you make sure you don't break anything instead of the whole thing, this is a great way to do it. So I'm just gonna go back to his main baselines. Um, let's go ahead and grab the code. So I'm gonna download the zip. And now that we have that, let's take a look. We'll go to downloads. There it is, let's extract it. Yeah, so we have a little readme, which is good. And then we have each separate JSON setting. Very, very cool. So if I go up here, I'm gonna go to devices. We'll cancel this. We're not gonna set up their security baseline. We're gonna do our own. We're gonna go to windows and configuration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit create, but we're gonna import policy. So we're gonna browse for files. We're gonna go to downloads, exactly where we just uh, extracted all this. Security baselines master. There we go. And we're gonna start with the administrative templates JSON. So we're gonna call this uh, security baseline. He gave us the name right here, which is great. Administrative, administ you gotta be able to spell still though, or read, either one will work. Save. All right, it was created. Let's view the policy. So here it is. If we go down to settings, take a look. This is exactly what was here when we took a look at this in the uh, in their security baseline. The only difference is this is just one piece now. So when we go back to our Windows configurations, take a look, security baseline, administrative template. If we want to introduce another one to test it, we'll import the policy, same thing. We're going to go right back and this time we're going to do user rights. Security baseline and say user rights. Very clean. It's a really clean way to do this. So now I'm gonna go refresh. Yep, so now we see the user rights one. Same deal. We go down and you're gonna see all those configurations here. It's so important to test these, right? Because you don't wanna interrupt your organization, right? And productivity and make end users mad. So what Dustin included for us is a UAT form. That stands for user acceptance testing. Let's go ahead and open this up. So what Dustin did here for us is he put together a form. It's got all of the separate categories, right? So there's our user rights one, there's our administrative templates. And what he's doing is he's creating separate groups to place users and devices in. What this is gonna do is it's gonna let us keep track of what's going on. So for example, so with my administrative templates, this is my first wave. So I'm gonna go to pilot one. So I would have, I would assign the administrative templates policy to my pilot group one. And I can do the same thing with the user rights group, right? And then what I can do is just by looking at this, I can see which policies are in their first wave pilot, right? And I can keep track. So I could say seven days, no, huh? I could say seven days, no complaints. We'll move on to pilot, pilot, two on Monday and maybe the user rights one. We've had several calls about access issues and we'll look into that. And maybe pilot one goes on to pilot two because it did so well. And then we go from there, but it's a great way for you to keep track of things before it hits a broader uh, audience. So I think, you know, Dustin did a great job with this UAT and the ability to, um, deploy them one at a time like this, right? This is really a great thing. Okay, so this is great if there's really no policies in your tenant. But what happens when you already have configuration profiles and things configured from the settings catalog? How do you know what already covers things that should be in a baseline, right? And compare them to security standards out there. So tremendous Intune resource, uh, Maxime. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I'm probably going to butcher it. May have butchered your first name. I'm terrible with names. They should really do something about that. I will put a link uh, to his contact information below because if you're not following him, you are missing out on some incredible Intune content. But he has created the Intune Toolkit, 
which it's an incredible resource all around. And I'm going to show it to you and how to download and get it going from GitHub. But he added a feature that lets you compare your configuration profiles against the Microsoft security recommendations. So you'll know now if what you already have satisfies some of those. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so if we head over here to this GitHub link that I will put below, you're going to see the Intune Toolkit. Let's go ahead and download the whole thing. Download the zip. Okay, so we're gonna open that. We are going to extract it. And close the browser window for now. There we go, Intune Toolkit main. Uh, so we should be able to just run, I believe the readme tells us to run main. Okay, so in order to run this, you do need PowerShell version seven. If you don't have PowerShell 7, go get PowerShell version 7. Um, I added it for this because it wasn't on this box. Blow this up a little bit. We're going to head to our directory. All right. I am going to set my execution policy to... We're going to set that to bypass. And now I'm going to run main.ps1. And there we go. Look at this. So this is a super... I mean, just an amazing tool. We have to connect to graph. So let's connect to graph and we'll probably sign in. Um, and this will allow us to, let's see, did I have some credentials here? How did it sign in? So, yep, Rubix dev. So I have cache credentials in PowerShell, so it picked up that. Excellent. So what we can do is we can search by policy name. We can just click configuration profiles and get those. So what I wanna do is, these are all my configuration profiles. So I'm gonna pick my BitLocker policy, my hello for business. I'm just holding down control to select more than one EPM. Um, I guess that's it for now. And I'm going to compare with the security baseline. All right. And that'll take a few minutes to run. All right. I'm being prompted for the output. So that's just going to go in. Let's make that C temp. And I'm going to make a folder called uh, toolkit output i mean you could do whatever you want that's fine um and we'll call this uh security policy check all right so let's go open that up we'll do c temp toolkit output oh i didn't put it in the folder my bad all right so that'll open in vs code or if you have another markdown thing but the cool thing is you just hit preview and look at the baseline setting comparison. So this is really cool. In fact, let me close the, let's just look at the preview. Um, so it's telling me I have, there are 314 baseline settings and I am missing all 314 and I have 10 extra settings. So right here, I could see nothing I have <laughs> is already set against that, which is really cool. But what if I run that again and I include the ones I just added? So let's go back and I'll, add those two security baseline ones security policy check two let's call it um, this time i am going to put it in the toolkit output I'm not like an idiot check this out this time so because we compared it against policies that already have this we can see we have three there are 314 settings and we have matched over half of those 184 um we have 17 ones with different configurations and we're still missing 113 but at least we can see how our you know what matches up here right so you can see we have um you know these are some of the ones that are enabled already stop bothering me visual studio code if we scroll down okay so we can see we have a bunch that are missing and we can see the differ the ones that are differs right so modify firmware environment Right, I have that set to not define. That differs from what I'm sure the recommended policy is. So this gives you incredible optics and visibility into your environment so that you can show here, here's how we're doing against uh, the security baseline standards. Thanks to both Dustin and Maxime. I am so sorry for mispronouncing that if I am. You know, having the ability to import these one at a time so that we can, you know, have a good testing method is just invaluable. Last thing we want to do is break productivity and, you know, interrupt users while we're trying to secure the business. And then the Intune Toolkit, which was already incredible, and, you know, we'll definitely do a full video on it at some point. But adding that feature, I mean that's providing us some really valuable info into the existing tenants. So excellent job uh, on that one. And yeah, I'll have the links below to both pages, right? And uh, 
check it out for yourself. See where you're at. Jump in the Discord. Um, and if uh, for some reason you do need to reach out for me, you can now do that at steve at getrubix.com. So I'll put that below. We'll be seeing you.